<laughs> Hi guys and welcome to Vegan Booty Talks. Today I have a special guest with me. She is a vegan fitness and nutrition coach, helping women get fit and healthy through weightlifting and plant-based eating. She transformed over 500 vegan women through hormone optimization and healthy living. She is national qualified bodybuilder and NPC competitor. Welcome to the show, Brooke Sellers. Hi, how are you today? Hi, I'm good. Thanks for having me on. I'm so glad we are having you on. Thank you for finding time to show up in my podcast because it's all about booty, but it's all about plant-based booty. And you, I'm sure, know a lot of tricks and tips to grow your glutes as well as how to help uh, any woman with a plant-based diet. But before we're going to get started with my questions, can you tell our listeners who may don't know you a little more about yourself, where you're from and what do you do for a living right now? Yeah, so um, I am in Atlanta, Georgia, which is in the United States. Um, I have lived here most of my life. I am a vegan fitness coach, as you described, and I help women get in really good shape. Um, through weightlifting and plant-based diet. So I've been doing this um, through my business, Meatless Muscle, for about three years now, but I've been a personal trainer for over five years. So um, it's my passion. I absolutely love it. Um, I started my own fitness journey about six years ago, and I was just so passionate about um, the power of food and nutrition and how it makes you feel, the healing properties, um, that I decided that's what I wanted to do. I wanted to help other people achieve what I achieved. And um, I've been doing that ever since. Wow. Okay. Well, it's amazing and absolutely, uh, you know, inspiring. What are you doing? And then your competition journey as well. But I want to kind of get back and then find out why you actually switched to the plant-based diet, where that came from and when it happened. Yeah, so um, I had been working out for about a year already when um, I had gone plant based. Um, so I was just watching Netflix one day. I stumbled upon this documentary called What the Health, and uh, it just sounded one. yes, it just sounded like something I would be interested in because I was, like I said, already working out. I was very health conscious. I was trying to be better and better about my habits. Um, so What the Health, I'm like, this sounds like something I would like. Uh, but little did I know it was all about, you know, the health complications from eating meat and dairy, um, the cruelty that the animals go through and how terrible it is for the environment. Um, so with all of this new information, I just felt like um, I had to do something about it. I'm a huge animal lover. So I kind of felt like a hypocrite, um, loving animals, rescuing animals, donating to charities, but here I am eating animals. It just didn't make sense. Um, and I'm very passionate about the environment, um, keeping our earth clean, but yet I was contributing to an industry that was responsible for its demise. So I just felt like something had to change. So um, I bought a couple books. I did a lot of research. I decided I wanted to go completely vegan. And I really just did it overnight. Like I know a lot of people kind of cut out dairy or like they cut out eggs or like something, but I just completely just stopped and just went vegan the next day. Um, wow. That's crazy. Yeah. Cold turkey. Okay. So you was a, a dairy eater as well, right? So like from yeah. like a standard American dine, you one night switched to the plant-based. Yes. Wow. Oh my God. I'm sure you got some challenges with challenges was that so how yeah. did you figure it out what to eat <laughs> and uh you know maybe how did you feel about that yeah I mean I was definitely nervous and I had a lot of concerns because like I said I had already been working out for a year so um I had all of these goals I wanted to build a ton of muscle um and I'm like god how am I gonna do this while also going vegan I had made up my mind I'm gonna go vegan this is what I want this is who I am I know this is my purpose like this is definitely what I'm supposed to be doing um but you know I still have all these goals that I want to achieve so I would say in the beginning um I would say it was really difficult like figuring out the protein sources how to get all of the protein I needed, because as you know, like us as bodybuilders, we do need a little bit more protein than, you know, the, the normal person, um, just because of our training. So 
like, gosh, I don't know how I'm going to get this protein in. And <laughs> I would say in the beginning, I probably um, didn't eat as much protein as I do now because I just did, I wasn't as educated. Um, so it was definitely a process. I just had to kind of educate myself. And I feel like even six years ago, there wasn't as many resources as there are now. Like when I went on Instagram, there was a couple people, like some of the big people like Tori Washington, um, Nimai Delgado, but there wasn't really any really super fit vegan women who were really muscular, sharing their diets, sharing their training. So um, I kind of just had to figure it out. <laughs> and I read books um, and just really educated myself as much as I could. And I would say it took me a few weeks to really get it down, but I was just determined. So I made it happen. Wow. Okay. If anyone out there are like in the same field right now, want to switch to the plant-based diets, already trying to do it, like what are those like a real practical tips you can give them to, you know, make this transition a smoother? So I would say first, um, you know, just switch your proteins. Um, if you're already like, for example, um, maybe having, let's say eggs and pancakes for breakfast or something, you could easily do a vegan protein pancake instead. So you would just swap out the milk in the pancakes for almond milk. Or um, if you use eggs, you could do a flax egg or an egg replacer. Um, if you're doing eggs, you could use just egg. You could do a tofu scramble. Um, so I think it's easiest for people to keep the meals that they're already used to and then just make them vegan because they're already used to eating a certain way. Um, they know what they like. They know what flavors they like. So I think it's easy when people stick to their kind of same foods that they're used to, but then just switch to the plant-based option. Yeah, I agree with you. That's the easiest part. But at the same time, I want to know if you struggle with that because a lot of my clients do say that, oh, I really miss meat or, oh, this is the most common. I want a cheese and vegan cheese just doesn't do the deal. So have you struggled with those and how you overcome those? Yeah, my clients are the same way, at least the ones that haven't already been previously vegan. And you're right, cheese is the biggest one, like cheese, for whatever reason. Well, we do know the reason we know it's highly addictive, just because of the chemicals that cheese contains. Um, it's super addictive. So I try to remind my clients of that, you know, you miss cheese, because it's extremely addictive. It's like more addictive than cocaine, because of the casein that is within cheese. Um, yeah. And you have to remember that. And I think, when you remind people of that, it's kind of like, okay, do I really miss cheese? Or is this just something that um, my body has this chemical dependence on that I'm trying to break away from? And also just how you feel. Um, you know, like, I think that's a big part of it, too. You eat cheese, you eat meat, you get bloated, um, you feel sluggish, your digestion slows down. Um, so, you know, I think remembering how you feel and knowing that you just feel so much better without these kind of foods, it's so worth it in the end to cut these things out, make the sacrifice. Like, yes, it tastes good for like the two seconds that it's in your mouth, but how long is that going to sit in your body and cause issues? Um, and then not only that, but just all of the suffering the animals had to go through for that to get to your plate. Um, so I just try to remind my clients of these things and also just ask them, like, what is your big why? Like, what was your big reason for going vegan? Did you have high cholesterol? Um, did you want to set a good example for your kids? Do you want to be around longer for your kids? Like, whatever your reason is, I always try to remind them of that. Um, because I feel like when people are in touch with their purpose, they're so much more motivated and they're so much more likely to stick with it. Yeah, I agree with that. And thank you for sharing this. This is such valuable information and tips to anyone who listened to us. And as I understand, your why was saving the planet and saving the animals, first of all, right? When you decided to go and switch to the plant-based diet. Yes. So with this being said, I want to point something that you said and kind of extend on that, because I think this is a really hard question and misconception in our world is we all love animals. I don't know any any person on this planet since God, I don't know that want to kill animals for any reasons. And we all have usually a lot of us 
uh, you know, home pets. And if we see how animal, you know, killed or treated now, like we are against that. I don't know anyone who's going to stay and say, yes, kill this pig. Come on, you know, get this head out or something. I don't know pe right. people like that. But when we go to the restaurant or when we are in our kitchen and we open the freezer and we see the dead piece of animal, we kind of accept that as a normal. So I want to just to, uh, I, I would like you to just extend on how did you, after watch that movie, realize that, you know, you're doing something wrong because you're actually eating the animals. Because it's really hard question. A lot of the time people are separate those two things and they say, oh no, I'm not harming the animals. The animal already that. I'm go to the store and someone already killed it. So either I eat it or it's just gonna, you know, stay there or go bad. So how do you are, you know, look at that in perspective of being a coach and how did you apply it in into your mindset? Yeah, that's such a good point. I and it's funny because I actually uh when I was in college, my senior project was on the psychology of eating animals. Oh, wow. <laughs> um oh, that's a good question to you then. <laughs> yes, because it just I'm I'm like you, it it fascinated me like how we as a society, not even just like one person, but as a society, we make this disassociation between what's in front of us on our plate and what it's actually coming from. And I think we lose this, um, this association that this animal was literally only raised and brought into this world to be killed. Um, and I think a lot of people imagine these animals like running around on farms and they're happy you know, and they're, they're with their family and they get to keep their babies and they're just all happy and they get, they're in the sunshine and eating grass. And that's just not how it is at all. Like they're in these cages, they're pumped full of antibiotics. They are um, sick. Most of the time they're just in terrible conditions in their own feces. They're literally attacking each other, eating each other just to survive. Um, and it's just, it's really terrible, like the conditions that these animals are in and none of us are exposed to it because they try to keep it a secret Yeah. because they know if the world saw what conditions these animals were in, like whether you give, whether you care about animals or not, like, let's say you are, you are a person, you don't really care about animals. You just see them as that animals. Like they're not very conscious. They don't have feelings, whatever. You, there's no way that you would still want to eat that animal that came from those conditions just for sanitary reasons. Like just for the fact that it's so disgusting that they're like literally up, up to their waist in, <laughs> in feces and they're sick and they have like these growths. I mean, all these an animals, like they get cancer. Nobody's doing anything about it. Like, but there's people are still eating it. Mm -hmm. So I feel like even if, you don't care about animals. You wouldn't want to eat an animal from that environment. And um, these companies, they, they know this, they know this. That's why they transport these animals at night when nobody's on the road. Um, they, you know, incriminate people who try to expose footage within these places because they don't want to getting out. They don't want people seeing what's really going on because no one would want to consume it. And I feel like people have to remember that. So like when you're going to the store and you're like, well, somebody killed it, wasn't me, you know, I might as well just eat it. Like supply and demand too, it's just a part of an economy. So if, the, if there's less demand for that product, eventually I feel like the companies are gonna have to respond to that. And if we're not supporting, if you have a big community that is not supporting those industries, they're going to take a hit. And as we continue to build the vegan community, it's only going to become more and more progressive. And I think we're going to save more animals. We're going to save the planet and um, save our health and people dying from chronic illnesses. Yeah. And I think also nowadays we come to the point that in some, in some years, I don't think it's going to be far away. We all would have to switch to the plant-based diet because the climate change and what's going on, on the planet because of the animal usage, it's just crazy. So I think like either you do a choice or, you know, choice will be, this choice will be given to you as like, whatever, you have to do it. 
So yeah. yeah, I agree with you, but thank you for your perspective because yeah, I think like a lot of the time it's like really hard to explain to someone who are like not aware or, because it's a lot of information out there. We have all this footage right now, but the problem is now no one is want to watch that, right? Yeah. We got blocked not only by social platform, oh, I got blocked from people who don't want to see how animal be treated because they still want to eat them. So it's like a lie that you are saying yes to live in. And this is crazy. So either you do that choice and I'm not going to judge you. It's fine. If you are, you know, understand how the animal was treated and how it was killed and raised and you still do that choice to eat it, that's fine. But you have to make that choice and not resist it, right? And say, it's not my responsibility. The animal already killed. No, it is your responsibilities. That's the best point, I think, in our discussion right here, right? Because we are not the judges and we are, I mean, I personally have even like non-vegan clients as well. As a nutritionist, I have different type of clients and I'm okay with that because I believe that everyone have a choice in this life to do whatever they want to do. And if the diet work for them and they feel great, you might as well just keep it, Right. But, but in the same time, you have to make sure you do it mindfully. You know what you do it, right? So thank you yes. for that. I absolutely love that part. Now I want to kind of deep in how you, from that switch to the plant-based diet, decided to become a coach, how that happened. Yeah. Um, I mean, so I got in really good shape and um, I... I mean, I was really passionate about it. I just wanted to be a trainer. Um, and I would have people, you know, kind of ask me, like my friends and my family, if I would train them, if I would help them with their own weight loss or muscle gain, whatever they were trying to achieve. And um, I mean, it just, it would be one person, then two people, then five people, then 10 people. And I'm like, hey, I could really do this. Like a lot of people want my help. So um, yeah, I went to a local gym um in my area and I started as a personal trainer there and that's where I was educated I got certified um I was also in college at the time so I was also studying there as well um so I graduated I wasn't making much money as an in-person trainer so um I kind of abandoned that for a while and then I went to work at a bank um but I was so unhappy there and it just wasn't fulfilling I wasn't getting to live my passion it just I, I was, it wasn't purposeful. So I just figured, you know, I'll start this little side business and it was during 2020, you know, we're all bored anyways, because ev everyone's locked down. There's nothing to do. So I'm like, all right, well, I'll start this little side business. That way I get to have fun. I get to live out my passion and like, you know, make a little bit of money on the side, but it just ended up taking off. So I made meatless muscle and within three months I quit my job because I was making three times what I was making at my job. <laughs> and, um, yeah, I've, I've just, I've been doing that ever since and just growing it and um, trying to help more people and be a better coach and um, just keep progressing. That's amazing. What do you think has helped you? Why you become such a successful coach in so short time? Because I have a lot of examples that people are kind of like knocking in the doors for many, many years, and then they're not finding success in the same field that we are. So do you think it's something you did differently that helped you to such a you know, big success in a short time? You know, I think a lot of people probably resonate with my story because I haven't always been fit. There was a time in my life where I was really overweight. I was really sick. I was really unhealthy. Um, and, you know, I think people really resonate with that because it motivates them. It shows them that they can do it too. Like no matter where you're at, if you're obese if you have like terrible asthma like I did and you feel like you can't work out um it's absolutely achievable if you put your mind to it so I feel like people mm -hmm. saw my transformation and it made them believe in themselves because it's like if she could do it I can do it that kind of thing you know mm -hmm. um so I feel like that really helped me and I also feel like it just really helped me being vegan um having such a specific niche was really helpful. And like I said, when I came on the scene, there just wasn't that many very muscular vegan women. And I was looking for someone to look up to at that time. Um, I mean, I, I literally, I can't, I can't tell you anyone. I mean, I was following Nimai 
um, Delgado and I was following Tori Washington and um, there, there just wasn't a lot of very muscular women. Like there was very fit kind of petite women, but not women who like you look at them and you're like, they're jacked, you know, um, which is what I wanted. That was my goal. So I was like, all right, that's, that's who I'm going to be. Um, I'm going to be Miss Meatless Muscle <laughs> and, you know, see how it works out. So I also feel like that was kind of helpful for me too. I feel like now there's so many other vegan women out there who look amazing and they have their own platform, but I did come on, I feel like at a time when there just wasn't really that many jacked vegan women out there helping people. So I feel like it was just kind of this perfect storm um, that people just really resonated with my story and they really um, liked my message and what I, what I stood for. Yeah. Well, I, let me ask you a little more about your story for someone who don't know. So you said you was having asthma before and then you was overweight. Can you tell us like, like even before, before you are, you know, decided to switch to a uh, healthier lifestyle and, you know, went to the gym? Yeah. Um, so, I mean, I was overweight most of my life and my whole family was, um, I come from a family with diabetes, high blood pressure, high cholesterol, tons of heart issues. So, um, my family, we live in the South. It's very unhealthy here. <laughs> Um, so, you know, that's just kind of what I grew up around. And when I was in school, I was, I was bullied for being overweight. Literally, they called me the fat girl. That was my nickname. It was terrible. Um, and when I got to college, I just was at a point where my health was just deteriorating. So it was so much more beyond like what I looked like, you know, I look in the mirror, I'm not really happy with how I feel. My clothes aren't fitting me. I was buying large, then I was buying extra large, then double XL. And then it's like, well, double XL doesn't fit. I have to buy a triple XL. It was just oh kind of getting banned. And um, besides that, like I said, I, I had asthma that was just absolutely terrible and um, just chronic inflammation. I was on three different medications, one to help me sleep because literally I, when I was sleeping, my lungs would rattle so loud. I could hear myself. Like I could hear my lungs <laughs> when I was trying to sleep. So um, it was just, it was terrible. I had an inhaler. I could hardly even walk around my college campus without just being totally out of breath. Um, so I just, I got so tired of it. I was like, I can't live this way. I'm going to end up really sick like everybody else in my family. Um, and I just, I hated what I looked like too. So I just, I wanted to make a change. So I just literally decided one day to go sign up at Planet Fitness of all places and uh, started there. And I just did all the machines until I knew more about training and, um, and yeah, I mean, that's, that was just kind of it for me. I was just tired of feeling like crap and I was just ready to do something about it. Wow. Wow. But, but that's so hard to do. Like yeah. being so much overweight, it's like even place your thoughts to do something about that. And then, then physically go by yourself to the gym. This is so hard. Like, did you have anyone who helped you during that time or how did you find that? you know, uh, that impulse in yourself, like to actually overcome those challenges and try to change something. Yeah, I had no one helping me <laughs> um, because my, oh. like I said, my, my parents were very overweight, very sick. Um, and I had a boyfriend at the time who was also very overweight. So that's kind of part of my issue was he was like over 300 pounds and I would just eat whatever he wanted to eat. So like we'd go out to fast food together and I told him, you know, I'm tired of being sick. I don't want to feel this way. Like I want to be able to live life and travel and have fun and, um, you know, wear clothes I want to wear and feel good about myself. Um, and he really wasn't on board. Um, he just kind of, um, he held me back more than anything, but, you know, eventually that ended and we separated and I was fine, but yeah, I was just like, I know what I want and I just, I know what my future could be. And I know, um, I don't, I don't want any health issues and I don't want to be sick. So that was just a huge motivator for me. Like, I just really, really wanted to be, wanted to feel better. And I just knew that I could, I could beat it. And, um, I just knew there was a better life for me. So I just was so dedicated to having a better future that I was just really motivated to go every day. And it was less about the results because the results were kind of slow. Like I lost a lot of weight, but you know, muscle building takes a lot of time. So the muscle came on slow. Um, 
but I was just feeling so much better. And it got to the point where I wasn't even on any medications. Um, I didn't even have any issues with my asthma anymore. Um, I was fitting my clothes, like my clothes fit better. I was dropping sizes and I just, I just felt so much better and I loved it. I fell in love with training. I fell in love with the whole process. So it was super motivating. Wow. And during that time, uh, because I'm sure for someone who listens to us and maybe want to do the same or already started, it's it's hard. And I want to know during that time, is ever like, did you like step out, maybe like, I don't know, ate a french fries with a burger one day because you felt bad or something like, and if you did step out from that, you know, that decision, how did you push yourself back? Yeah. Um, so I will say I've never eaten meat or dairy since going vegan, but I have had my like cheats, you know, like, of course, always vegan, but like, yeah, I'll eat really healthy. And then of course, like there's times where, yeah, I feel really bad and I go get a pizza, a vegan pizza or like a vegan burger and French fries or vegan ice cream or like whatever. And then, um, I mean, I would be lying if I didn't have like a whole weekend where I binged out where like Friday turned to Saturday turned to Sunday, but I've just, um, I've always gotten back on track, even mm -hmm. after those, those slip ups. And I feel like that's why I am where I am today is because even when I would mess up or whatever, I would still eventually come around and get back to it. Like if I probably, and especially the gym now, nutrition has always kind of been a struggle for me because like I said, I come from a family where food is everything like food, but that's what we did for fun. Like we went out to eat together every holiday. We'd make food like food was a big part of our family. Like growing up, we had lots of memories attached to food and it was like, it was a fun thing to do together. Um, it was also a coping mechanism. Like my parents stress eat, they taught me to stress eat. So it was kind of like food has always been a really big struggle for me, but where I've never struggled is the gym. So even when I was like, really struggling with nutrition, I would have these binges or, you know, whatever I'd mess up, maybe have a little bit too much pizza or whatever. I was always still going to the gym consistently. Mm -hmm. Like I've probably never taken more than a week or so off from the gym in the entire time I've been training. Um, yeah. so, and I, and I think that's important for people to realize because it's like, even if your nutrition is not on point, if you're still showing up and going to the gym, you're still building muscle. So you're still making progress. So even all this time where I felt like I'm not making progress because my food's not on point, I was still making progress. I was still building a ton of muscle um, because I never stopped training. So I feel like that's a really, and that's something I like to remind my clients too, like, because people tend to mess up on their diet and they just beat themselves up. And it's just this like internal warfare, but it's like, hey, you really didn't mess everything up. Like you, there's no way that you could have lost all your progress. Like you're still building muscle. So it's okay. Like just get back on track. And if anything, sometimes your body needs it. Like mm -hmm. sometimes, especially when you're in a, and you know, you know this because you're a competitor. Like when you're so depleted and you're in a big deficit for a long time, having a couple days where you eat some junk can really help your body. So that's what I try to remind my clients. Like, look, there is no way that you've ruined all your progress just for a few days, um, even a week, like God forbid, even if you went on vacation and you just ate like crap all week and then you come back and you get to it, you're still making progress. So I think it's really, that's really helped me um, over the years is that even when I have those slip ups, I still always get back to the gym and then eventually the nutrition follows. Yes, that's amazing uh, advice. And I do feel the same way. And a lot of the time I also like, you know, step out from my normal nutrition and everyone is like asking me all the time, mom, my gosh, you're always so lean. How you do that? How you, you know, be able to eat all what you eat? Because I post about that. I am open to share that I eat different stuff and I even eat it on a daily basis. I just get blessed with a good metabolism and I'm like, because I train. So anyone out there, like stop only worry about your nutrition more worry about lack of resistance training right yes 
because a lot of the time that's also misconceptions we like buy all the healthy stuff sitting on the diets and you know orders expensive supplements but we just forgot that the most important part is actually show up and resistor train resistor train and that's what's gonna start the process of you feeling better and then be healthier I feel like I can talk to you forever, but we kind of have to, uh, you know, uh, wrap it up. So before I let you go, I want to ask you, do you have any competition uh, plans for this year? And uh, also where our listeners can find you and follow you or maybe work with you if they're interesting. Yeah, so um, this year I am taking off. So I'm taking off 2023 to really build some good solid muscle. Um, my last feedback for my last show was they needed me to pull on a little bit more muscle, which um, that's what people don't realize about bikini is like bikini girls have a lot of muscle. So yeah, especially um, like last couple of years, I feel like it's changing now. It's even more than oh, yeah. before. Yeah. Like I was 152 pounds on stage and I'm five, six and that's a lot, like that's a lot of muscle, but I still needed more glutes. Um, so that's my goal is to build a little bit more glutes. Um, also got to balance my hormones and just make sure I'm healthy because, you know, you know, competing is really hard on your body. So you can't do it all year like I did last year. So this year is my year to kind of reset, build some muscle, get healthy. Um, and then next year, I don't know. I'll see. I'll see where I'm at. Um, but I definitely want to get on stage again, but I just want to make sure it's the right time. Um, and then as far as um, if you want to work with me or find me, um, my Instagram is miss underscore meatless underscore muscle. If you want to follow me on Instagram and you can check out my website at meatlessmuscle.net. Yes. And all those guys is going to be in the description down below. So you can easily find those links to follow uh, an amazing journey of you as a coach. I think you're a great example for uh, anyone who want to become a coach and for or any clients who are interesting. So you guys can just scroll it down and find it in the comment section below, whatever you listen on, on any platform. And before we finish up, is anything I didn't ask you that you want to share? Or if not, just any last thoughts on our today conversation that you want to tell everyone? Hmm, I say my last thoughts are, if you listen to this podcast, and you are not vegan and you're curious about trying it, go for it, give it a month and just see the benefits, see how you feel. And um, I think that's it. Thanks for, thanks for having me. Well, it was my pleasure. I actually going to be in Florida again soon on a vegan fest in Sarasota, Sarasota. That's how you say it, I believe. Really? Oh my gosh. Are you going to be there? I didn't even know that was a thing. When is it? 21st of May. 21st and, of May. Okay. Yes. It's um they do this in, in different states, this veggie fest. And, okay. and do you know Katya Garbachova? Yes, yeah. So she invited me to that one and to speak to speak about plant-based proteins. So I'll be there. And if you are come, if you're gonna be around, because uh, I believe so John may come too. He just moved to Tampa, so he said, I can't, I want to come, but I just moving. So, you know, it's really hard for him to plan, but if we all going to guys, you know, be there, it's just going to be fun, fun event. Yes. Yeah. I, um, uh, my boyfriend has family in Sarasota, so we go there all the time. Oh, um, okay. So, well, yeah. We'll have to time a, it. Yeah. yeah. Maybe that's a good idea for you then. Yeah. I will love to meet you as well as you guys. If you listen to that, I will be there because I am I'm based on Hawaii. So not a lot of people come to Hawaii. So yeah. I will, if you guys listen to this, come to Veggie Fest in Sarasota to meet me and Brooke. And then I hope a lot of others vegan plant-based athletes and speakers and trainers. So it's just going to be a fun event. Anyways, I absolutely love this conversation. I think it's valuable for all our listeners. So thank you so much. It was really nice to talk to you. Thank you for finding time today. And I, I think we may be back soon. <laughs> yes, definitely. I would love to. Bye-bye. Have a wonderful rest of your day.